Hi everyone, it's Johnny Seed here again and I'm back with a bit of a vinyl roundup of uh, some of the things I've picked up over the last couple of weeks, mostly from Charity Shop, um, a couple of things from the market and at the end there was uh, two LPs which I got through the post today from eBay. Alright, we'll start off with uh, this thing, it's uh, Jeff Love and his orchestra doing Star Wars and other space themes. Um, look at this cover. I mean, who is that? That is uh, Han Skywalker, I think, probably, uh, uh, with Barbarella, and we also have the spaceship from 2001, and whatever this is. Um, yeah, trying not to infringe on any copyrights from Star Trek there. It's got the UFO theme, main title from Star Wars, of course, uh, Star Trek, Barbarella. Uh, Space 1999, which is a fantastic piece of music. Also, Sprach Zarathustra from 2001. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, I'm sure. And a bunch of other things. So yeah, When Worlds Collide, Doctor Who theme. Uh, yeah, I quite like these Jeff Love and his orchestra and his uh, renditions of uh, movie themes. Uh, always got quite good with the orchestrations. Right, so we have a mix of uh, rock, pop and classical. So there's a couple of Beethovens which I picked up. Uh, this was the number four sympathy and number one sympathy. Now these, uh, this particular line, uh, I'm collecting them. Uh, I'm probably going to make a video when I've uh, collected all nine of them, or eight actually, because uh, one of them is that I've got is two symphonies on one. Uh, so yeah, this is just, uh, these are the ones by Andre Klutens and the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. Uh, there you go. And another one, so the, the cherry shop that I go in quite a lot, the, the, one, the place that had the um, Roy Harper album, the Focke Joker Purse for 50 quid, which I've made a video about, uh, they do get some good stuff in there, and the pricing is, is quite interesting. So some of these were 20 pence, so uh, for a 20 pence LP I could not pick them up. So I've got this one, it's got Pier Gint Sweets on it, which I really like. Uh, so and there's also some Bizet, which I'm not familiar with that one. I have to give this one a spin, but yeah, I do like the Grieg. And another one I couldn't really resist for 20 pence, John Boldler. Who is he, you might think? Well, I have no idea. But he just saw this cover, John Boldler and his Technics organ. So I thought it was just maybe some guy who um, had a bit of money or maybe rich parents or something and decided to make an album. But no, he's actually a professional keyboard player. Um, and so I guess this was his dream project. It says here, uh, born in Wigan, Lancashire, his fir he first began playing Mo. Shut up. You want to be on the video? Right, sorry about that. Mo, Mo was complaining about not, not being in the video, so he's, he's now here. So, yeah, okay. Yes, I am making another video. You got a problem with that? <laughs> what do you mean they're all shit? <laughs> so I'll start this again, shall I? John Boulder uh, and his Technics organ. So yeah, this was a kid, he, uh, at the age of, now at the age of 16 when he made this. Um, he was born in Wigan, Lancashire, and at the tender age of 6 he began playing the organ. And he played, uh, he had, he played at many venues, uh, including one evening playing the famous Wurlitzer organ at Blackpool Tower. And now, or I don't, uh, now I think he's now, that's his full time job. So yeah. Dreams can come true. Uh, but yeah, the music's just garbage. And another one which I picked up just on the basis of this cover. Uh, well, not actually just on the basis of the cover, because when I looked on the back, uh, yeah, it turned out this was by Storm Records. I don't know if you can see that, which was a Blackpool record label, which I didn't really know existed. Uh, these are Candlewick Green. Apparently they won a, a talent, talent competition on the telly back in the 70s. And they had a minor hit with the song. Let's have a look on here. Um, Who Do You Think You Are? Which was covered by St. Etienne. Um, so yeah, uh, this actually came out, believe it or not, by this cover in 1977. So yeah, the Sex Pistols had already been out. And there were still people dressing like this and making records. Um, <laughs> so the sound wise it's a, I guess you'd maybe call it a bit sort of Motown-y, it, it sounds professional, professionally done, it's well good, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, you know, lots of vocal harmonies, compared to like Jacksons, the, the, the white Jacksons. 
And another bit of classical. This is uh, favourite Russian music. I picked this up because it's got the Prince Igor theme, uh, sorry, the Prince Igor overture on it, uh, which I heard, overheard somewhere, and I thought, hmm, that sounds good. I must look into that more. So. Uh, again, this was, I don't know, less than 50p or less, so I just thought I'd grab it. And yeah, another one you can see, you've still got the sticker on this one. Uh, there it says 20 pence. Um, I, 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 you know, what can you say about an album where the one of the people decides to dress in formal dinner dress, as you might be able to tell, this is from the early 80s, judging by what this guy is wearing, and let's just say it, it sounds like it looks. <laughs> um, all right, finally, something you may have heard of, uh, John Denver, I think this was 50 pence, I thought it was an actual studio album by someone I've heard of, for 50 pence I'll pick that up, uh, I've never heard of John Denver album, of course I've heard of Jen John Denver, uh, a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, the, it's got Rocky Mountain High on it, which is which is good. Uh, it's also got Mother Nature's Son on it, the Beatles song, which he kind of makes his own. It really works with that. Um, but then there's a track on it called For Baby, in brackets, For Bobby. Uh, and it's got to be one of the worst things I've ever heard in my entire life. Uh, it's just the most schmaltziest, sugariest, awful thing that I never want to hear again as long as I live. Uh, and on the B side, there is a um, goodbye again, which is right, a bit of weird lyrics. But they have the season suite, summer, fall, winter, and late winter, uh, and spring. So, uh, and that's really good. Yeah, some parts that I thought were quite enjoyable. Okay, another Chipola charity shop find. This is Reggae Tight. Um, I quite like reggae. Now, I wasn't expecting this to be something fantastic, but I, at the price I thought I'd pick it up. It turns out it's a kind of British reggae uh, in the fact that it's, um, it's a band which came over from Jamaica to London. And it says here, the, the, well, by, sorry, it, it, the artist is the Jubilee Stompers, um, which it says on the back there, but it doesn't say anywhere on the front, probably because no one had ever heard of the Jubilee Stompers. Uh, but they came over in the 60s or something, and it says here they were playing Latin American, progressive soul, uh, but then when reggae became a craze, in the hectic and smoky atmosphere of the clubs and discotheques, they changed their style to suit their fans, or they jumped on the bandwagon. Um, but it's not bad. <clears throat> I'll say it was kind of uh, Desmond Decker sounding <clears throat> uh, reggae. Soft reggae, you might, might call that. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, it's got red wine on it as well, literally, the stains. <laughs> right, so if you saw my video about Preston Market and hunting for vinyl there, you may have already seen that I picked up ZZ Top's Eliminator for £5. Uh, fantastic album this, from the mid-80s, it's got legs, it's got TV dinners on it, which is another single, which is a great video if you can ever find that somewhere. A Sharp Dressed Man, of course, um, and Give Me All Your Loving. This is the, probably the record that launched them into the mainstream over in the UK. Um, sold a, a shit ton. Um, but yeah, couldn't go wrong with that. And also on the same day at the market, for one English pound, I picked up Steve Miller Band, uh, Book of Dreams, uh, an album I hadn't heard before. Um, but I was familiar with the song Jet Airliner, which is very good. Uh, yeah, good album this. Uh, I very much enjoyed it. Uh, I always get the Steve Miller band mixed up with the Jay Giles band for some reason. Um, don't ask me why. You, you know, <laughs> so that's that. Right, and so uh, last Friday afternoon I was uh, on eBay just having a, a browse around, and I saw a uh, auction for <coughs> da -da, Led Zeppelin 2, an album I've been after for years and years and years. But every time I've seen it anywhere, it's always been either in such terrible condition, which I couldn't even bring myself to buy it, or it was upwards of £20. And me being a cheapskate, I didn't want to fork out that much money, so I thought I'd hang on and wait till I got one at a decent price. And I saw, saw this on an auction, 
a full, I think the, the current bidding price was about £3 with one bid, so I put in a bid for a fiver, wholly expecting it to be a guzzum to the last minute. I think there was about 20 minutes left. So I put the bid in for a fiver, and lo and behold, I won it! So yeah, £5 for this uh, copy of Led Zeppelin 2. Now when I've, uh, I've looked it up, this, I think this is the third reissue, so I'm guessing this would be uh, early to mid-70s. Um, but after I've been looking at the cover, I don't know if you can see that, it does look a little bit shonky on the printing. It's a little bit out of line there, and, and over here by the L, if you just look on the outside of the lettering, um, it doesn't quite match up, and also there on the Atlantic logo, it's got a bit of a white bar there, where it shouldn't have, so I'm guessing this is just a, a misprint. But the rest of it looks legit. At first I thought maybe it was a, a bootleg copy, but everything else seems to... Uh, pan out and it looks old enough so I don't know did they make sort of bootleg versions of Led Zeppelin albums back in the 70s who knows and so yeah when I was bidding on this I had a look at the sellers other items and they had another album which I thought I would uh, put a bid in because it was only going for two pound <coughs> opening bid and this one had 10 minutes left so I thought you know what I'm gonna put in a bid for two pound um, two pound fifty or something and uh, you know, expecting someone else to come in the last minute, but no. So I got a copy of Dark Side of the Moon, finally on vinyl, for two quid. <laughs> and as you can see, this has got a lovely patina on it. Uh, Ringware, I think the, uh, the, the name the, uh, is what it's called. Um, so yeah, it's a bit duffed in, but I, that doesn't bother me one bit. I kind of like it more. Uh, I think the duffed in vinyl you know, age vinyl makes each one unique in the, in their own way. So, gatefold. So this isn't the first first pressing, and it's got a really big scratch on side two. Uh, I haven't actually put it on and listened to it yet to see what it affects. But for two quid, I just don't care because I uh, I can have it now in the collection until I get a, a better copy. So, there you go. Right, so thank you very much for watching. That was my uh, roundup of vinyl um, from April and May 2018. So I'll see you again next time.